Summary of Looking for Alaska by John Green At the beginning of the novel, Miles Halter is moving away from his family in Florida to go to the Culver Creek Boarding School in Birmingham, Alabama. Miles is a smart but lonely junior when he comes at the school, and he is motivated to seek a great perhaps. At school, he makes friends with Chip, who is also known as the Colonel, Alaska, and Takumi. Each of them has a special talent, Chip can remember facts about other countries, Alaska can quote poetry, and Takumi can freestyle rap. Miles is obsessed with great people's last words, and Alaska tells him that Simone Balvers were escape the labyrinth. He died thinking how to do that. Alaska is often wild and exciting, but she can also be sad and shy. Miles spends a lot of time trying to learn more about her, but he doesn't get very far. Overall, though, he is happy to have friends at last. Miles spends a lot of his time at Culver Creek learning how to break the rules. He also makes friends for the first time in his life. His friends tell him to smoke, and then he starts drinking on college. When Miles first gets to school, two rich kids who don't live on campus, Kevin and Longwell, wake him up in the middle of the night, wrap him in duct tape, and throw him into the school's lake. This makes the colonel very angry, so he and Alaska come up with a plan to get back at them. Over time, the group finds out that Kevin and Longwell thought the colonel had told the Eagle, the head of students, about two students named Maria and Paul. Alaska's roommate used to be Maria, but she and Paul were kicked out of school for smoking pot after getting drunk and having sex. Kevin and Longwell did this because they think the colonel hurt one of their friends. Alaska wants to get back at the weekday warriors even more when they flood her room and ruin her life's library of books she has been saving to read. How Maria and Paul got kicked out of school for most of the first term is a puzzle. Eventually, Alaska tells Takumi that she told on them, and Takumi tells Miles. When the Eagle saw Alaska breaking the rules, he threatened to kick her out of school unless she told him about other students. Takumi and Miles can't figure out why Alaska was so afraid of being kicked out of school but she told on her friend. At Culver Creek, the most important rule is that you don't tell on anyone, no matter what they do. When the colonel finds out that Alaska did it, he is very angry because trust is very important to him. Alaska and Miles stay on school during Thanksgiving break and then go home for Christmas. Alaska, Miles, Takumi, the colonel, and Lara, who Alaska thinks Miles should date, play a joke on the weekday warriors when they get back. Takumi and Miles throw fireworks off campus to confuse the eagle while Lara dyes Kevin's conditioner and hair gel blue. At the same time, Alaska and the colonel send a number of weekday warrior parents fake progress reports that say their kids are failing. The group hangs out and gets drunk in a barn the next morning. They play a game called Best Day Slash Worst Day, in which each person tells a story about their best and worst day. Alaska's worst day was when she got home from school and found her mother on the floor and shaking. Alaska was very young, so she didn't call 911. Instead, she sat with her mother until she fell asleep, but her mother actually died. Alaska has never told anyone in Culver Creek that her mother is dead, and now Miles can understand why Alaska is so moody and quick to act. She can't move because she remembers freezing when her mother needed her, so she keeps moving all the time. In the evening, Miles and Lara start going out together. Alaska and the colonel get drunk the next night to celebrate the success of their joke. Alaska challenges Miles to kiss her. They do, at least until Alaska says she's tired and asks Miles to be continued. Everyone falls asleep until a crazy Alaska wakes up Miles and the colonel. She asks them to help her get away from school by distracting the eagle. Miles and the colonel don't know why she is upset or where she wants to go, but they confuse the eagle long enough for her to leave. The eagle tells the school the next day that Alaska died in a car accident the night before. Miles and the colonel spend most of the rest of the year trying to deal with their sadness and figure out why Alaska left and whether she meant to kill herself or not. Miles and the colonel fight a lot, and both of them get depressed. Miles's world religion class helps him deal with what happened. In the end, 
Alaska's friends decide to honor her by doing the trick she had planned for their final year. After a few days, Miles and the Colonel figure out, with the help of Takumi, that the night Alaska died was the anniversary of the night her mother died. Alaska had forgotten to put flowers on the gravestone of her mother, so she got drunk and drove off to do it. Miles decides in the end that he doesn't care if Alaska killed herself or not because he loves her no matter what. The book ends with Miles going back to his search for the great perhaps and deciding that forgiveness is the best way out of the labyrinth of suffering. About the author Green grew up in Orlando, Florida, and then went to Indian Springs School in Birmingham, Alabama. The setting of Looking for Alaska was based on this school. Green went to Kenyon College after high school and majored in English and religion. Green started out studying to become an Episcopal priest, but he changed his mind and decided to focus on writing instead. Booklist hired Green to review books while he was writing his first book, Looking for Alaska. He has talked about how he was bullied and how he used what he learned to write the book Looking for Alaska. Some people think that Green started a new age of young adult stories because he runs a number of YouTube channels, with Vlogbrothers being the most well-known. The New York Times' A.J. Jacobs calls his style of writing Greenlit. He says that Greenlit stories have sharp dialogue, flawed authority figures, occasional drinking, unrequited crushes, and one or more heartbreaking twists. Green lives with his wife and two kids in Indianapolis. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.